energy from the light reactions in the form of ATP and NADPH, in conjunction with ribulose 5-phosphate, are utilized to convert CO2 into a more useful carbon compound. Specifically, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, or GAP. Additionally, the Calvin cycle will regenerate the ribulose 5-phosphate that was used, and the ADP and NADP plus will need to be regenerated during the light reactions. The first reaction of the Calvin cycle is the conversion of ribulose 5-phosphate to ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate, utilizing the enzyme phosphoribulokinase. The next reaction is the actual carbon fixation reaction. CO2 is added to ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate to generate two 3-phosphoglycerates. This is done by ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase, also known as Ribisco. For convenience, we will be labeling the carbon from the CO2 in red. Next, we phosphorylate 3-phosphoglycerate, generating 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, utilizing phosphoglycerate kinase. The final energy-consuming step is the reduction of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, or GAP. This will utilize glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. At this point, it will be important for us to keep track of the molecules which we have generated. We initially started out with three ribulose 5-phosphates. Each one have created two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates. So we currently have a total of six glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates in reserve, one of which will be used by the plant in some other functions such as gluconeogenesis. The remaining five glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates will be utilized to regenerate the original three ribulose 5-phosphates. The next reaction will use triose phosphate isomerase to convert two of the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates to two dihydroxyacetone phosphates, or DHAP. The previous reaction is repeated once more to generate a second dihydroxyacetone phosphate. One of the dihydroxyacetone phosphates will be coupled with one of the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates still in reserve to form fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This will be done by the enzyme aldolase. Next, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate will be dephosphorylated to fructose 6-phosphate by the enzyme fructose bisphosphatase. Transketolase will now transfer the first two carbons from fructose 6-phosphate to one of the remaining glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates. This will generate erythritose 4-phosphate and xylulose 5-phosphate. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate will be coupled with erythritose 4-phosphate by aldolase to generate cefeptidose 1,7-bisphosphate.
Subheptidose 17 bisphosphate is dephosphorylated by subheptidose bisphosphatase to yield subheptidose 7 phosphate. The first two carbons from subheptidose 7 phosphate will be transferred to our final remaining glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate by transketolase to generate xylose 5 phosphate and ribose 5 phosphate. The two xylose 5-phosphates are each converted into ribulose 5-phosphate by phosphopentose epimerase. The final reaction converts ribose 5-phosphate to ribulose 5-phosphate utilizing ribose phosphate isomerase. Having regenerated the third ribulose 5-phosphate, the Calvin cycle is now ready to repeat itself.